Did you get? Oh, there it is. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters and potential Toastmasters. Welcome to our show, Wake Up with Toastmasters. I'm your host, District 115 Club Growth Director, Ken Richardson. And with me today is my co-host, the lovely, distinguished Toastmaster and past District Governor, Phyllis Trivi. Good morning, Phyllis. Good morning, Ken. Good morning, everyone. How are we doing today? Oh, it's going, well, I don't know how everyone else is doing, but you know, it's it's another beautiful Thursday. So I'm pretty stoked about that. I'm glad to be here, uh, especially with you. I've been really excited about um, this particular uh, program, because as you know, we have contest season coming up and it's been a while since we've done in-person contests and the, the uh, district council did vote to have in-person in contests this year. So that's pretty exciting in and of itself. And that means we need, we need to sort of review and the chief judge is a very, very important role. I know that you have uh, filled in that role at least nine times at every level throughout the organization from club to district. So I think it's really great that you're sharing your expertise because we can read all about it and we know the rules, but it's those little surprising things that come up and that you learn about through experience. So I'm just gonna turn the program over to you, Phyllis, and wherever you want to start, this will be our uh, conclusion of our program on the Chief Judge. The floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. Yes, we have been going over uh, a PowerPoint and the only thing that we really haven't got to is to talk about the voting. So I thought maybe today we just fastly go through all the slides as a review and spend a little more time at the vote counting and when to use the uh, tiebreaker ballot and how to use it. It's surprising what some people think that we should do with the tiebreaker ballot. Okay, let us begin here with our slideshow from the beginning. Oh, what's that? Stop that. There we go. There you go. All right, now let's just begin here. I'm going to go, as I say, fairly fast through some of these things. Uh, this is a presentation that was given to another district. So, you know, you always want to tell people what they're going to learn and what you hope to accomplish by giving this presentation. So we're hoping that in reviewing this presentations for Monday, Tuesday, and today, that people learn what the duties are of the chief judge, how to give a good briefing, which we did quite a bit of time on yesterday. Today, we're going to talk about counting the ballots. And yesterday, we did talk about protests. So I'm hopeful that everyone has got that. That the chief judge is a large part or intricate part really of a smooth operation that we would, should be prepared. As I say, we're just skimming over these things. We're not going into them because we actually have talked about them before. But the main thing is to do as much as you can before you leave the house. We did not really touch on, you mentioned some of the contestants eligibility forms. That is the duty of the chief judge to collect those unless there is a contest chair who can also collect them. And the contestant eligibility simply states that they are eligible and that their speech is original. So these are all items that you would need before you leave the house. I can't tell you how many times I've got to contests and had the presiding officer tell me that they had everything prepared for me. And no, they didn't. So if it's at all possible, I tell the chief judge, do it yourself. That way you know it's, it's ready to go. Uh, I've even had to have somebody get more ballots. I had to send someone out to get something printed. So 
We talked about timing. And the first gesture or the first words is when the timing starts. And this is any connection with the audience. So if you have somebody that's walking up there and looks at the audience and salutes them, that's contact with the audience. And the time starts. People don't realize it's not necessarily the first words. It's the first contact gesture, something that connects the audience with their speech. And I don't know whether I stressed it as many times, but you'll see confidentiality every time I finish a slide of people that I have briefed. There's no uh, form for the vote counters and the timers to sign, but you know, we need to keep confidentiality and they need it as much as the judges. All the functionaries really need to keep confidentiality. Don't be talking about what you heard or what you see. We didn't really go over vote counting, but uh, the vote counters, but I think that's kind of, you know, that I, we're going to go more into that this morning, but you know, there are signals that you can set up so everybody knows that there's enough ballots been collected and when to leave with the chief judge and confidentiality. And this is a big one. I stress it many times with my vote counters. You'd be surprised that contestants know who the vote counters are because they see them walking around the room. And well, how did I do? Well, did I, why didn't I win? How, well, where was I? Was I tied with somebody, uh, you know? And it's like, if you don't tell them that, their information is confidential. They're just liable to say something. And I'm going to tell you, there can be a whole ripple through the district for somebody that spoke when they shouldn't have. The judge's briefing. I think the one thing that we learned yesterday or Tuesday by actually having a certificate is the qualifications for being a judge are the same for the tiebreaker judge and for the chief judge. So since we've done that, I'm, as I say, we're going over these things quickly, but we did discuss them in detail. We also discussed protests. And I think one of the things um, that the chief judge does for the judges is explains this well, but I'm not sure that it gets explained well to the contestants. So I've always put in here that if it's possible to go to the contestant briefing, which is sometimes done by the Toastmaster, so you can explain, the chief judge can explain how protests work and that they're gonna be anonymous. I've also listed here the Sergeant at Arms. You know, uh, you think, well, what, what do you have to do with the Sergeant Arts? Well, when you finished all of your briefings and you're ready to watch this contest, then you tell the Chief Judge, the Sergeant Arts, that all the briefings have been done. Because I've had Sergeant Arms think that because it was the time of the contest, they could start the contest. And it's like, no, you cannot start the contest until the chief judge has done all of the briefings. And if we're a half an hour late, we're a half an hour late, but the briefings have to be done. So you wanna stop them from starting the contest before time. Also, you need to know where is the evaluation? How are you going to handle the evaluation? When to bring up the contestant? Who's gonna stay with the contestant? Where's the room for that? And where is the briefing room or the room where we go to count ballots? So the sergeant at arms should know those things. Also, in telling the sergeant at arms that you're ready, you would also tell the presiding officer. And I had somebody ask me, who's the presiding officer? Well, <laughs> 
At an area contest, it's the area director. At the division contest, it's the division director. And at the district, it's the district director. And I always present my information to the district governor, because sometimes the district governor will be announcing who the winner is, a director, I should say, sorry about that, or the club quality director will be announcing, or they'll do it together. But it's always safe to go to the head man, you know how that is? <laughs> so after the contest, you know, this is when the contest is finished, you're going to leave to count the ballots. You want to be sure you have everything. And, uh, you know, I even added pins. And you can believe this or not, but I have got to count the ballots without a pen. <laughs> Luckily, somebody had pins on them. But, you know, things happen. You don't want to be carrying out all of your material. So you put together what you think is it. And no, you get Absolutely. out. Murphy's Law is going to jump in there and bite you at some point. <laughs> yeah, you know, you get to say, oh, I know how to do this. There's no problem. This is what I have. And all of a sudden, there you go. Something goes wrong. <laughs> so we're in the room. We're counting the ballots. We don't have any protests. Everything's going along. And we always have free ballot counters. So I let them decide who's going to write on the record and who's going to do the counting, that they should switch that information around. And of course, I think most people know it's at the ballot, on the ballot actually. So first point, first place gets three points, second place gets two points, third place gets one point. So we fill out the uh, tally sheet and total it up. And if all the numbers at the bottom are different, you're good to go. Whoever has the highest number of points, of course, is the winner. And second choice, third choice, so you understand that. But what happens if there is a tie in the top three positions? I say top three, I don't usually go any further than that because top three is usually all that I actually record unless it's uh, something that has to go into international. And then I rank all 10 of, or all of the speakers. And the last time happened to be 10. So we would take out the tiebreaker ballot. In the tiebreaker ballot, the only difference is they have to rank all contestants. So they rank their contestants from one through however many there were, say there are 10. And you check the ballot of the <clears throat> tiebreaker ballot of who in the contestant race has the higher ranking. So if we have two people that are tied for first place, we check the names of those two people on the tiebreaker ballot. The one with the higher ranking wins first place and the other would go to second place. And then for third place, you would go to who had the highest score on the tally sheet. It's interesting what some people think. They think we're going to add back in that we're gonna put judge numbers on the rankings and use them. And it's no, it's just simple enough. Who has the higher ranking, they win the position. And then I actually use the notification of winners. There's been several different sheets uh, handed out to where third place is on the top because that is uh, how the announcer would announce them. And for me, that's a very confusing piece of paper. So the notification of winners is what Toastmasters International has given us, and you can rank them first, second, and third. It's up to the speaker to know that they are to go to the third place. Yeah, I've been in that situation where the, the uh, speaker announced the wrong winner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They announced the third place winner as 
the first place winner and vice versa. Of course, we had uh, a moment where the chief judge said, uh, excuse me, we need to talk about this. <laughs> As I said, if, if anything can go wrong, it probably will. And it is surprising. Um, I had uh, an occasion where I expected the chief judge to say something. And if they don't, it's perfectly okay. It's like point of order and point of order should stop the meeting right away so things can be taken care of. It doesn't mean that if you say point of order, you need to blurt out what's wrong. It means you need to talk to somebody about procedure. So take care of that. Notification of winners. Yes, list the disqualifications for time if there are any and either say no protest, protest or one protest, which means that the protest was upheld, the person has been disqualified for originality. So those are the things that we need to take care of as the chief judge. So as a summary, the chief judge is an intricate part of the smooth operation of a contest, know the rules, carry the book, if you do a great judges briefing, then you get great judges. Be prepared, do as much as you can ahead of time. Protests are anonymous and confidentiality is the word of the day. Now, where do I get all my resources from? Toastmasters International, of course, under Leadership Central Contest. There's the contest rule book. Also under that same a tab is the frequently asked questions and the changes in the rule book. They'll have the rule book from last year with black printing and what the new rules are for this year in red. Also under this section, you'll find the eligibility assistance. This was great when they first set it up because I know that I have used it and it is to verify whether or not your contestants are eligible. When I read over it this time, it seems as though they put in some blocks. So if you're looking for someone in your club, it has to be a club officer. If you're looking for a contestant in the area, it has to be an area director and so on up the line. Gotcha. So I've not checked this out, whether or not they've really got that, because this is a great thing to look at and be sure that eligibility is happening for all of your contestants. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, hopefully, any chief judge can use this, but it didn't look that way when I read the instructions. Well, you can always count on your <coughs> division directors or your, your the trio, my, myself, I'll be happy to assist any of the uh, contest chairs or presiding officers at the contest to help them look up eligibility. Uh, and I know we, we generally have access to most of the uh, the options there in Leadership Central. So uh, we're here to help and we wanna make sure that the contest goes smoothly for all of our leaders and for all of our participants and all of our contestants. I am personally so excited that, that we are at last going to be uh, in person again for contests. I know there are a lot of folks out there and I understand completely that aren't yet ready for an in-person contest. And I get that, I get that uh, very much. I have uh, friends and relatives uh, that are still reluctant to go out unless it's absolutely necessary. And, and I think that's fine. Uh, one of the things that some of our members have talked about is they would like to see it more like a hybrid contest where you could participate as a judge or a contestant, whether you were online or in person. 
However, uh, TI has determined that that's, that really creates unequal footing between those who are in person and those who are online. So they have said you cannot do that, but they have said that we can live stream the contests. So that means it's like watching it on television. You know, you're not going to be generating a dialogue with the, the contestants or the people in the room. You're going to be sort of on mute the whole time, but you will be able to at least watch the contest. And I think that's terrific. So that's something that the area directors, division directors, and so on uh, need to take into consideration if they select a venue that has a really good Wi-Fi and they can live stream, they have the equipment, uh, that's going to be great because that means then more people can watch, even if they can't participate uh, because you can't have that mixture in a contest setting because uh, the footing would be somewhat unequal and you want to have equal footing. Uh, if everybody's in person, then be in person. If everybody's online, be online. Because it's different uh, from a regular club meeting. In a club meeting, uh, you know, I like having the hybrid option, but a contest is different and you have to sort of treat it different. Yeah, it, it is. It really is. And uh, I can just see so many problems with trying to have a hybrid meeting at a, a contest. Oh, absolutely. It's, yeah. uh, I mean, it's well intentioned, but it, I just don't think it could work. But I do like uh, the idea of uh, streaming. Uh, we're at 622, and since we're talking about contests, I want to share with our audience uh, the contest dates that we have for the area, the division, and the district. Contests will start on March 5th. March 5th, these are all, I think these are all Saturday dates. And on March 5th, uh, Division D areas two, three, and four will have their contests. On March 12th, areas B1, B2, B3, and C3 will have their contest. On March 19th, it's areas A1, A2, and B4. On March 26th, it's areas A3, A4, D1, and C4. April 9th, it's areas C1 and C2. And then we start with the divisional contests on April 23rd. Divisions A and B, April 30th, Divisions C, and on May 14th, it's the district contest, and that uh, will be in person. I don't think we've, I know that we are working with a potential venue, uh, and I'm sure that will be announced soon. And I think the dates will be posted, if they haven't already been posted, on uh, the website, uh, uh, d115tm.org. You can go there and look up the the dates. Other announcements. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to, to say in closing there, Phyllis? I think you, I want to thank you. You did a fantastic job in providing us with the uh, training, really, for, for the chief judge and something that certainly I can benefit from because I will be a chief judge this year uh, for Division D, and I very sincerely appreciate it. So any uh, final thoughts that you have on, on the uh, topic at all? Uh, no. It's just more information that any member has is beneficial to them. So if you want to learn how a contest is run or what happens at a contest, if you're unhappy with who the winners are, then next time be a judge. <laughs> you get a say in it. You can't complain about anything unless you've been a judge. I was at a contest one time where I had someone that read poetry and then he discussed it. My feeling was, wasn't original. He was way too much of somebody else's content, but I didn't volunteer to be a judge. So I got no rights to talk about whether or not he was disqualified. So, Excellent. And I think uh, one of the cool. things that I love about contests, uh, just the competitiveness of it for one thing, but also is the opportunity it gives you to learn new leadership skills. If you are 
heading up a contest, if you're a Toastmaster, if you're a judge, whatever it might be, uh, organizing and participating in a contest is a great opportunity. Uh, and it was the first opportunity that I had to sort of get outside my club level and learn about what, what's, what's, that, what's beyond the club. And I learned that in a contest. I do want to note that the dates and what have you will also be in the upcoming newsletter that'll be out February 1st. We have a couple of other things I want to remind folks of. On uh, January 24th at 6 p.m., I think that's a Monday night, we will have the TLI. For those who prefer the online mode, it's going to be just as engaging and uh, informative as the in-person TLI that we held on January 8th. So if you didn't have a chance to attend that or the early bird TLI, please join us on uh, January 24th. And if you need more information on that, shoot me an email at d115cgd at gmail.com and I will get you filled in. Also coming up February 5th, I believe it is, will be the uh, District Executive Council and some training will be associated with that. There'll be more information coming out on that in the near future. Then on February 12th, see, we, had to, we just have so much <laughs> great stuff that's going on. On February 12th, we will have our Educational Enrichment Night. Uh, the classes that will be offered from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. will be announced in the newsletter. So that'll be out February 1st. Uh, it's, this is a regular thing that we do. So please join us. And Game Night will be the last Saturday of the month. Uh, that will also, there will also be a link to that so you can register in the upcoming newsletter. Let's see, have I forgotten anything? Well, we wanna know who out there is gonna be our next um, area directors. Very good. Directors. Come forth, volunteer, now is the time. Paperwork is available on the district website. So step Absolutely. forward. No. Absolutely. Absolutely, fellas. Thank you for reminding me of that. If you're interested in becoming a district leader, just go to the website and you will find a tab there and a application that you can fill out that the district leadership committee will review and get back to you. And while you're there, if you're looking for more information on contest, go to the contest tab and there, uh, there's a plethora, that's word of the day, plethora. Uh, <laughs> of good information that you can download. There are various uh, spreadsheets that will help you uh, keep track of volunteers and, and let you know what volunteers you need to recruit. There is a very comprehensive planning guide that you can download for contest chairs that is uh, uh, very detailed and all the forms uh, that you, you might need are there. Just be cautious though, make sure that you have the latest version because sometimes these things change, as Phyllis pointed out, particularly the rule book. Uh, make sure that you have the latest version. And I keep that on my desktop on my laptop, Phyllis. So I, I won't have a paper copy with me, but I will have my computer uh, and a PDF. <laughs> uh, let's see, there are no questions in the box. I see Jennifer Smith joined us today. Our, our uh, P PRN, Public Relations Manager, we're so glad that she's here. Remind everyone also that Wake Up with Toastmasters is on uh, on this Facebook page five days a week, Monday through Friday. So hopefully you will be able to join us every day. And if you'd like to be a guest or if you have ideas for the show, please get in touch. Well, that concludes our uh, show for today, Phyllis. I want to thank everyone uh, for watching. I know many people do watch a little bit later, and we appreciate that. 6 a.m. is a little tough to get up, uh, but I do appreciate you watching it later. So thank you for joining us, and we will see you again. Phyllis and I will be back on Tuesday. Tomorrow, I believe we have Gene Williams and Gene Dunford as the, the team on, on deck. So thank you very much, and we will see you next week. Have a great weekend, Bye. everybody. Bye-bye.